What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Unknown Drag Queens. My name is Black Rose. And I'm Summer Phil. And I'm very filthy. And welcome back. Welcome back, mother peepers. <laughs> In today's video, we are going to be recapping Canada's Drag Race episode five, I believe, right? Episode five, the Snatch Game. The snatch I am snatch so excited because game. I love the Snatch Game. is one of my favorite the episodes. Snatch Game. <laughs> the Snatch Game. But before we get to the recap, you guys, if you're not subscribed to our channel, please do not forget to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you guys do not miss any of our upcoming videos. Also, please do not forget to go ahead and follow me on my social medias. Actually, hold back, rewind. I will chat, We have um, Unknown Drag Queen's social media now. So what? we have our new Instagram and Twitter where you guys can follow Unknown Drag Queen's. Um, so that information is going to be listed. Pretty soon we'll have an OnlyFans. Right over here. <laughs> And you'll see us do all kinds of dirty things. So our new social medias for It'll unknown drag queens. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so our new social medias for unknown drag queens is going to be listed right over here and on the description box below. So yeah, follow us. Um, so we can have fun. <laughs> yes. But with that said, you guys, let's go ahead and jump into the recap of Canada's Drag Race. If this bitch tells me to move one more time. Bitch, look where the fuck I am over here. Like this shit keeps falling. That's it, I'm calling my agent. <laughs> I'm calling my agent. I'm not enough of this. <laughs> In last week's episode, uh, the uh, lip sync was between Ilona and Tainomi. And Tainomi, that was her third consecutive lip sync. Even though I think, she, I really felt like they both did a good job. Um, and there was a chance that she almost pulled the camera Michaels off and did a three win in a row. Oh my God, yeah. Which would have been crazy, but it's happened before. Um, Ilona did win, and Tainomi went home. Um, and last week's winner was Rita Baga. We got her second Rita win, first Baga. person with two wins. So that's kind of like what, what happened last week as a recap. And this week, we have the Snizatch Game. The Snatch Game. It is one of my favorite episodes of the RuPaul's franchise. All right, you guys, so this week's mini challenge is the reading challenge. And I actually love this one. So my this favorite. week was... Two of my favorite challenges, the reading challenge and Snatch Game. They actually go really well together because yeah. they both require sort of snappy wit. I do think you get a chance to sort of prepare for the reading challenge a little bit if you've been there for a few weeks because you, you kind of can write down some thoughts during the week. So yeah. You know, like things like, oh, if there's a reading challenge, I'm going to say this, you know, but yeah. So the winner for the reading challenge was... Ms. Lemon. Ms. Lemon. She, she was shady. <laughs> yeah, she did great. Now we move on to the Snatch Game, you guys. Sniggity Snatch Game. So for the Snatch Game, I am going to pull up my phone here real quick because I do not remember who did what and who did who. So, <laughs> excuse me for I know, a second. there's like a lot of people still on the show. But for the Snatch Game, we have Jimbo as Joan Rivers. How did you think she did? Jimbo did amazing. She uh, was hilarious. Very good. She really, he really, na uh, she really nailed the the voice. Oh, it was funny. And the man. The rhythms. look was very like Sharon Needles does Joan Rivers. Yeah, which was super funny. Yeah, it was very funny. Um, overall, definitely did very, very good. And then Lemon. Lemon. Oh my God, Lemon did, did fucking she, fabulous. She did JoJo. She did JoJo Siwa. Siwa. See, yeah. And oh my God, that was so. Who funny. I I think I have only vaguely remember seen once or twice before. I, like I don't know much about her, but she's when she, an annoying little she, girl. Yeah, but when she started doing the character, I was like, oh yeah, that's like it made me laugh no matter mm -hmm. what. Like it was just very funny, over the top, and like it was so funny because you can tell. Like I bet JoJo in real life has that sort of over-the-top energy oh like she does positivity like everything which is which is awesome and uh friggin lemon just it was hilarious it. even the forehead the bitch got everything yeah down. the hair the manner she was doing the the <laughs> <laughs> baby had a son of a <laughs> <laughs> and then we have miss rita baga as edith piaf who i don't know piaf. who that is i don't know who but she it's an is. old um, lady who is senile and crazy but that's what's like it was funny like she was funny and you could just, her look was so funny. <laughs> like her look, it just looked like someone's grandma was on the stage, was up there doing Snatch Game. 
who just got out of the, who somehow escaped the nursing home and was like yeah. up there just being crazy. She so. was funny. She yeah. was good. And then Elona Verley. Yes. She had Rebecca Moore. Rebecca Moore from the Cock Destroyers. The cock destroyers. She was funny too. Yeah, pretty funny. Oh my god. I feel like there's I mean, most of the time you don't hear Rebecca say anything because she's a porn yeah. star, so she's usually just a dick in the mouth. But um, there are some clips where you hear her say things, and I think she's got she's got a bit of an accent. I don't yeah, know if she's British does. or not. But I thought Ilona did for what... What was hilarious was Ilona saying um, when, when Brooklyn Heights asked her, um, how do you spell cock? And she's like, see, ock. That was so funny. See, oh my god, it was oh, so hilarious. Yeah, the way she was over over the edge. She does a good job with it too. And then next up, we have Miss Scarlett Bobo as Liza Minnelli. Actually, pretty good Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Under like it got outshined by other people, I think. But, I feel like Liza, Liza Minnelli funny. is very easy to like. Yeah, I, and also, I mean... Because Alexis, uh, Alexis Michelle did her on her yeah. season, and that was fucking hysterical. Because Eliza Minnelli has that per, those personality that's kind of, wow, crazy, yeah. nutty, you know? She's, like, always been that way. So next up, we have Miss Boa as Gypsy Rose, and I understand why she did how she did, because she was kind of holding back a little bit. Yeah. Because of the controversial character she was playing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I kind of liked what she did. Yeah, she did okay. Next up is my favorite, Priyanka, as Miss Cleo. And oh my god, this girl, poor thing. I love Priyanka. Yeah, I love Priyanka too. And She's not the first person to do Miss Cleo. She did pretty bad. Yeah, other people have done Miss Cleo, I believe, or at least it's been suggested, I remember, in other episodes. The thing about Miss Cleo is she's got that very familiar Jamaican accent and from all the commercials in the 90s. I feel like if you're gonna do Miss Cleo, you better have four or five predetermined lines that you know you can work in mm -hmm. that are gonna kill. You can't just go out there and 100% free, like free ball it because it's free ball it. Um, <laughs> because it's just, you could see it, it happened to Priyanka. She was missing opportunities where she could have, she, she could have said something that in regards to like, being a psychic or something yeah. like, and she just didn't. So next up is Miss Kiara and she did Miss Mariah Carey. Mariah and Balenciaga <laughs> Carey. Meh. Yeah. It's it was very bad. They mentioned this before. Mariah Carey isn't like she's kinda she's kind of zany, but she's not someone that you we don't hear her voice like in as a real person very often. Like no. it's not like she's <laughs> it's not like I mean, I she, think she's had funny things happen to her that you can kind of make fun of. The best, and this was an even Snatch Game, but yeah. the best drag queen to imitate Mariah Carey was Shangela on oh, that yeah. Divas music. Yeah, show. and that wasn't Snatch Game, that was just, that was a good impersonation that was just of Mariah Carey. Yeah, that yeah. was just amazing. Yeah. So this week's main stage challenge was A Night of a Thousand Celine. Celine Dion. Hello, <laughs> I am Celine Dion. <laughs> I drove on and <laughs> And, um, I don't dislike Celine Dion. No, she's fine. But I don't, I'm not, like, a huge fan of her. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, how, how could someone dislike Celine Dion? Yeah, she like, seems I, like, a super nice person. If I hear a song, like, I'll listen to it. But yeah. she's not my choice of, like, oh, I'm yeah. a, I'm she's a. She's got a few good ones. Do she's got a few bangers in there. But, like, yeah, yeah. I like but the song I, I she, like her. I like her voice. I like, the, I like her voice. I like the song that she did for the last Deadpool movie. I thought that was really good. <laughs> and then, um. You know, I like so I like some of her songs that that aren't as as huge. But yeah, she's she got a good voice. She's fine, and obviously she's Canadian, so that's yeah. why they were doing. You know, she's a Canadian like like uh, you know uh, superstar. All right, so first up on stage is Miss Boa, and she is wearing this beautiful fringed outfit, um, inspired obviously by Celine Dion, with um, a feathered headpiece. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? Um, now. My thing with these is like I like to look at the side by side pictures of her and you know of the person and the original because there's yeah. so many looks to choose from. I it looks so, it looks good. Like if I didn't know that Celine ever wore it before, I would be like, oh, this is kind of cute. Mm -hmm. I do see why the judges critiqued her the way that she, they did. They said it didn't give her enough shape, and I agree because when you look at the side by side, you can kind of see Celine's. You can see shape, and I think part of that is because she didn't put as many. Uh, of the fringes on either that or it's just that her pictures in the light and you can't see I don't know, because of the of the lighting I don't know, but you can see the bodysuit uh, on Celine's and you can't really see Boa's bodysuit. 
So Celine's is more like a kind of like a blazered bodysuit. Yeah. Um, it's more of like a constructed kind of like outfit. And it has, although it does have a lot of fringe, it doesn't have as much fringe where you can't see the underneath of the outfit. Um, Celine obviously wore it better. And Miss Boa kind of, mm, it was wonky. Yeah. It was too much fringe. It, it made her wonk, look wonk. super big. Yeah. And she pats beautifully, so I don't know why she did it. And this was inspired by the Met Gala 2019. back in 2019. Next up is Miss Scarlett Bobo. And she is wearing a Celine look from Paris Fashion Week 2019. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cute. It's like a little, it's like a dress with like a drapey arm situation mm -hmm. happening. Um, when you look at it side by side with the Celine version, it looks very similar. Yeah. Um, I love that. I, I actually really like Boa's hair in this, like the updo. It's very Boa simple. looks totally different. Yeah. She looks like a totally different woman. Yeah. It's like the first week that she's been kind of forced to not be able to do something sort of punk rockish. Mm -hmm. and, and she looks beautiful. And it's very cute. It's mm -hmm. a, it, I love her as like punk rock boa, but I, I like her. But as, this is gorgeous. This is very elegant. Mm -hmm. um, she looks fantastic. I love that champagne color of her outfit. It's beautiful as well. Yeah. And she did great. She looked oh, gorgeous. She did like the little Celine moves. Yeah. Or the Selena. I'm sorry. Next up is Miss Kiara. And Miss Kiara is inspired by the Courage album release party in 2019. And she is wearing this little mini dress. It kind of reminds me of what I'm wearing today. A little bit. Looking cute today. But uh, anyways, she is wearing like a mini dress with like, um, I don't know, with like ruffles around it, like around the seams. It's got some and tool on it, it looks it's like. It's pretty cute. I like it better on Celine, just because it looks cleaner and it looks not too cheap. And I don't know. It's cute. I feel like Celine looks, uh, like Kiara looks a little... A lot of cheap. <laughs> she looks a lot of cheap. I don't. I don't know. Kiara's. I'm bored of Kiara to be honest. And that might sound like a bitch, but sorry about it. Here's the thing about this look: is that it. It's good. I think it looks cute. <clears throat> it's pretty spot on. No, the hair's ugly on Kiara. Eh, sorry. It looks okay. No, it doesn't. I'm not worried about it. It, it looks fine. It, is it the best look of the week? No. Is it the worst? Okay. Maybe. It's okay. Up next is two-time winner Rita Bagger. Rita Bagger, I said. <laughs> two-time winner Rita Bagger. Um, she, come, she came out in this Eurovision 1988 look, 1988 look of Celine's, um, which was like this really terrible jacket dress thing. Very and 80s. It looked absolutely terrible. And then she did a little reveal, and the reveal uh, actually did a call back to Celine's 1988 um, incognito tour look. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the look. I don't like the way Rita's makeup is done. I don't like Rita's hair. I love Rita Baga, but I, don't, I hate this runway. I hate everything about it. <laughs> Where to start? Um, the shoes are nice. That's it. I really don't. I hate the first white outfit. I hate the second outfit. I hate Rita Baga's makeup. The hair. It was bad. Ugh. She was looks like she has a potato hen. I mean, uh, on like uh, this little. Ugh. I don't know. I mean, Celine Dion has a million different looks. I usually like looks. how Rita Baga looks. Yeah. It looked bad. Or she will look decent. This week, she looked. Like it was, it she found it in. She found it in. Next up is Miss Jimbo, and she is inspired by Paris Fashion Week 2019's look. And I love this look. Um, I don't know. Again, so I don't know. The uh, there was something off of this, off on this look. Um, I don't know. She dragged it up with using again like black sequined. And um, it's like a go-to for drag queens. <laughs> I, I think it looks amazing. But um, I think Jimbo it's a looks cool good. look. Just Jimbo's makeup. This is actually probably my favorite makeup, like quote-unquote natural makeup that I think Jimbo's done so far. And it's good to see that she's trying to get there with like the more natural looks. 
because we've seen a lot of like good movie makeup from her. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it was okay. It was okay. The look was good. Makeup was eh. That's my kind of opinion on that. Meh. Meh. And up next was Ms. Lemon. And she was wearing a uh, Celine's 1998 Academy Awards dress look, um, red carpet look. It was this. It was a pretty, a very pretty blue dress. Um, it's kind of interesting seeing Lemon and brown and dark hair. It's kind of cute. Um, makes her look older. It does make her look a little older. I will say this, uh, and this is kind of what the, the judges said. And, and I, it's the thing that I kind of noticed right away. I don't know why she didn't put hip pads on. Like, it's. She lost a little femininity when you, she didn't do that, and I think it lost a little bit of a look. It looks like a boy's body playing dress up. Hi. Um, she didn't even have these. Oh. She had no titties. She had no hip pads. She was cinched, but she didn't look cinched. I mean, makeup was I'm great. I'm cinched, and I'm just sitting here and. Her makeup was great. This is my natural body too, so it's a it's if a pretty. If I pass. can do it, just to be fucking here talking about other queens. And we're nobody. We're why can't they do it? Queens. Like it's annoying to see girls that have that body and not take advantage of how skinny they are. Um, Jujubees. They should take Jujubee as an example. She pads beautifully. Next up is Miss Ilona Verley, and she is inspired by Celine Dion's collection launch in 2017. And I kind of like the take she took on this one. I hate the shorts. The shorts look gross, especially when she turns around. Yeah. Um, they don't fit well at all. They don't fit well. Obviously, Celine Dion's shorts are pretty big as well. Yeah, like they're very big. They're big on her. But they're fashion. Yeah. They look good on Celine. It's like, I don't know, like, got stuck in the middle. She could have gone either with a skirt, I think, or she could have gone tight with them. And or she could have gone like big. a little bigger. Yeah. It was a, it was a weird fit, especially in the back when she turned around. Oh, like it, it was bad. like. I don't know, like it was weird. It looks flat. And um, I love the, uh, I love, I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I love and I love that well. she switched it from red to pink. Yeah, I love, yeah, I did too. Celine's was red and she did it, made it pink. Yeah, I love And that makeup jacket. Is, oh, she's so bitch, cute. Bitch, that jacket was beautiful with the pink rhinestones and Sarasi crystals and everything. That was beautiful. She looks, her hair, from the neck up, I, I love everything. And again, she, she didn't singe. That was a weird, yeah. Um, Even the judges were like, what? She looked like she was very, like, I don't know, she looked like a hog body, as the Georgia Lana would say. Up next, the delightfully delicious uh, Priyanka. Uh, I love Priyanka. She's awesome. And she went with a pretty cool idea, I think. Uh, the, um, Celine's 1994 wedding dress looked stunning. Like, literally stunned. It was an exact replica. Yeah, replica. It, it's it's so pretty. Priyanka looks so freaking beautiful. And then she did a reveal. And the reveal was to this beautiful little gold thing that um, Celine wore, uh, wore on the 2016 Billboard Music Awards. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I think she could have got away with just wearing the wedding dress. I don't think she even had to do a reveal. But, but then she killed it with the reveal. The reveal looks fantastic. I think both looks were amazing. My favorite look, I think, is, is this one. Yeah. Priyanka did the best, even though she did the worst on Snatch Game. She, she, sold, she did the best in the Celine. She sold the challenge. Celine mannerism so well, too, like this, the, the way that Celine moves her shoulders and mm. arms and stuff. Like she did a really good job. So, like, basically, overall, I would say in the Snatch Game, I would say Lemon. Jimbo and probably I know people love Rita Baga but I actually thought Bobo was really funny as Eliza yeah um, and then in the runway I would say uh, Priyanka Priyanka I would say then maybe Jimbo and honestly I don't know look even though the shorts were terrible it was really cute yeah so it's kind of a mixed bag this week mm -hmm. what do you judge more on do you judge more on the snatch game or do you judge more on the runway I feel like the snatch game is heavier just because it's it's such a hard thing to be yeah. good at. So after judging, the judges um, come up to the decision that Miss Priyanka 
and Miss Kiara are in the bottom too. And the winner for this week's look at the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and the winner Hi. of this week's challenge is Miss Jimbo. Jimbo wins. Jimbo gets her first win. Yeah. She, yes. It's true. Awesome. It's her first win. Yeah, first win. So the bottom two, um, so the bottom three actually was Miss Boa. No. Was yes. it Boa? Yeah, Boa. It was Boa, Kiara, Kiara and Priyanka. And Priyanka. Yeah. And um, ended up being Priyanka and Kiara. And ended up being Kiara and Priyanka. And go online and find this lip sync, everybody, because Bitch. it's really fucking good. The of this lip sync like this oh like my god the Canadian version of, uh, of Alyssa Edwards and Tatiana yeah lip -sync and all this was their Tatiana verse Alyssa Edwards for Canada it was so good Jesus Christ so everybody like, was going off on Twitter they, how amazing it was they filmed and they filmed and they kept the entire song they didn't cut off to the girls making comments and that, they, oh, she's killing it. And nope. they barely, and they basically stayed like in wide frame most of the lip sync so you could see everything. Only a few <sighs> times would they go cut to the individual person because mm. there was so much happening. Kiara's fashion might suck, but bitch turned out the party. Her lip sync was amazing. Every time I thought Priyanka was like pulling ahead with like selling the song like with emotion. Boom, here came Kiara. Kiara would like mm. sell it with emotion just as well, if not better. And it was... It was so good. It was amazing. The best this lip sync is, of the whole season. Yeah, this is, a, this is the best lip sync since, let's see, what was a really good season? Well, um, I would say the season 12 with Jackie Cox was really amazing. Oh yeah. Um, it's, it's like the best lip sync I've seen since then on 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 TV anyway. So yeah. yeah. It was really, really good. They both did amazing. Kiara's a good drag queen. I, I think. I hate her fashion. I, I like her fashion. I like to, I would love to see her do more extreme things, more like crazy things. No, it's not even about extreme. It's more about like tailoring it and making You're saying it polished. more. Yeah, she's very unpolished. Mm, I don't know. I think she did a good job um, overall. Uh, but her her lip sync was amazing. And, and I don't know. I could watch those. Two. I would pay money to watch those two lip sync. And that's yeah. what people would usually do. So it was really really good. So this week I honestly thought it was gonna be a double save, but unfortunately, no, they are cold as shit. Miss cold. Kiara <laughs> is the one that sashes away. They are away. cold blooded up in Canada. They're like no double saves. This isn't RuPaul. So Kiara is the one that sashes away this week, and yep. I don't know. Priyanka saved. It was a pretty good episode. Yeah, it, it was, was a really pretty good. good episode. This this uh, whole season has been really good. Exciting. Yeah, it's very good. So anyways, you guys, that concludes this week's episode of Unknown Drag Queens Canada's Drag Race recap episode. And with that said, you guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week to another episode of Unknown Drag Queen. And please do not forget to go ahead and give us a subscribe. It doesn't cost you any money. Also, if you do not follow us on our social medias, we just created an Instagram and a Twitter account for Unknown Drag Queens, which are going to be listed right over here and also in the description box below. So go ahead and follow us there. And with that said, you guys, we love you guys so very much. We love you. And we will see you guys next week on another Forward episode of... your friends. Share it. And we will see you guys on another episode of Unknown Drag Queens next week. Share this so. video. Share it. Share it with billions of people. <laughs> Don't forget to tune in next Monday, and we will see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>